Hello, Anikodia, and yes, it's been a while. I've been super, super busy, moving out, all that sort of good stuff. But we're back now, and uh, let's let's get back into a, a proper uploading schedule like before. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the best starter base, what you need to have in there, and how to set it out so you don't have any wasted space. For some reason, most players prefer smaller bases. Must be used to the smaller things in life, hey? <laughs> Oh, that's enough of that. Now, this is off the back of my last video where apparently I didn't go into enough detail on the base. So, here we go. Now, first of all, a starter base is exactly that. It's a base you can make with very limited resources right at the beginning of wipe where you can stash all of your pawn, stone, pawn. The bigger the base, the more it costs to upkeep. Hence why it needs to be small and compact until you build up enough resources to either expand or move out of that area completely into a more desirable place. The best starter base, hands down, is the classic 2b1 with a triangle airlock. Super quick to build, super secure in early wipe, and you've got enough space in there for everything you need to build yourself up. So once you've spawned in, farmed a little, or stole it all from a noob, whichever, Probably me. Get yourself a building plan and a hammer and get yourself a minimum of three and a half thousand wood for a fully fledged starter base. If you want to upgrade to stone with sheet metal doors, which I recommend you do as soon as you can, then you'll need 3,345 stone and 300 metal frag for the sheet metal doors. You can use the key locks from the wooden doors if you're upgrading because, you know, recycling and stuff. So you've secured your base, so let's look at what you need in there. Now let's look at the first thing, a tool cupboard. These things cost a thousand wood and it stops anyone not authorised from building in or around your base. It also acts as rent. So if you make your base out of wood, for example, you'll need wood in there for its upkeep. It'll use the wood over the time you're playing the game, so make sure you keep it replenished. Exactly the same as if your base were made out of stone or frag or high qual. If you don't keep it in check, you'll start to lose health on your building. The cool kids call this decaying. So let's plonk this in the back corner. Oh, and you can use it as storage as well. Not for everything, but for mainly resource related items. Next up is a sleeping bag, arguably one of the most important things. The reason they're important is because if you die, you can choose to respawn in your base. If you didn't have a sleeping bag, you would just randomly respawn anywhere in the map. And let's face it, you die a lot in Rush, so you need to be able to choose where you're respawning. Top tip. Put it close to the door so if you leave the door open by mistake when you die you can spawn in and close the door quickly before the enemies get a chance to kill you again. Another tip, try and hide it behind the door around the corner because if you leave the door open and there's a sleeping bag there, some cheeky little nakeds with a stick will start poking it and destroy it. So once you've got a tool cupboard and a sleeping bag down you need something to keep you warm and cook your food as well. Yep. A fire. These are dirt cheap at a cost of only 100 wood and you get 50 of the wood back when you craft it anyway in fuel. So for 50 wood it's a lifesaver. You can use these for storage as well. Next up you need a furnace. The more the better with these. They're useful from the first day of wipe right through to end game. They make everything from frag to sulfur and explosives. You need 200 stone, 100 wood and 50 low grade for these. You can get low grade by killing an animal and you'll get some chicken dippers out of it as well. The animal, not, not, not the furnace. These things are what you need to create the sheet metal doors I was talking about earlier. All you have to do is put some metal ore in there, light it and it'll spit out some frag. If you do need a little bit more storage before you can craft the bigger boxes, you can use the small boxes. Really cheap to craft, they don't take up much room. As you progress you can get rid of it if you want to and replace it with your bigger box, what does take a little bit more space, it's up to you. As you progress you can stay in your starter base a little bit longer and all you need is a bit more stuff, for example a level 1 workbench so you can get on that research tree and learn new things early on. You can also slap down a research table so you can be a little more precise in the things you want to research. Remember you can put boxes under the research table as well to save even more space. Now say you're four or five days in and you need even more space because you're filling these boxes up, you will have to get a little bit more ingenious with your building technique. 
So if you go outside and put a little foundation, it's probably best to use a triangle foundation just because it's a little bit cheaper and put it next to the foundation where you want the triangle shelf inside. Put a half wall on top of the triangle foundation and then the triangle roof or floor on top. When you go back inside, you'll be able to snap a shelf at that height against that wall, giving you a little shelf. It is a good idea to do this early game if you want to do it, so you can put everything around it. If you do decide you want to do it later on, then you just remember you need to move everything. And when you plonk it back down, it does do damage to it. So make sure you get your little hammer out and give it a little bash. Or another thing, make sure that you destroy your twig outside once it's done. Then you can put your stuff back down and there you have it. Tons of space in your base, enough room to swing a cat. Not that I condone cat swinging. What more do you need until you expand and move out? And that's it. That's the beginner video on starter bases and what you should have in there. So uh, that answers the viewer request. I've got a lot more viewer requests that's come in that I'm currently working on. Some are absolute bangers. So thank you to everyone that suggested. If you do want to suggest something yourself, let me know in the comments down below. If you follow me on the usual social media, you can see what I'm up to and why I've been away for so long. So sorry about that, but I'm back now. So you've got to deal with me. If you did like the video, feel free to hit the like button. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. If you do want to see more videos, then feel free to subscribe. Anyway, it's good to be back and I'll see you in the next video.